got it. Okay, so please welcome Miro. Hello, folks. Uh, it's really nice to see actual people uh, giving a talk. Uh, this is my first time after COVID when I meet people when I give talks. I had some virtual talks before, but it's... Who have ever given a virtual talk on Google Meet or Zoom or something like that? How, how do you like it? Uh, for me, it was horrible. Uh, but surprisingly less nervous. <laughs> okay, uh, I am... I am... Uh, come again? Yeah, it depends on the actual personality, I guess. Um, anyway, I am Miro Hronchok. I am one of the Python maintainers in Fedora Linux. Uh, I work for Red Hat uh, for almost 10 years now. I've been doing this uh, job. And uh, part of our job is to make sure that Fedora loves Python and that Fedora Linux is the best operating system Python developer can have. I've seen a lot of Macs here. Uh, you're probably running some Ubuntu's and Arch Linux as well. Uh, people use Windows, but we know uh, that Fedora is the best anyway, and it's just a matter of time. And part of that job is to make sure that everything works flawlessly. Unfortunately, people in Fedora also love Python, and they decided that writing everything in Python is a very good idea. Uh, and this gives, uh, it's awesome, we love that, like Python and Fedora, but uh, it brings an important issue, and is that all the system tools are also written in Python, and if you screw up your Python, you screw up your Fedora. Uh, it's a love-hate relationship. Uh, so it's very easy to actually break your Python installation if you don't know what you are doing, and if you blindly follow some random installation guides and stuff like that, and you can break the system. One of the most important things that's written in Python is DNF, formerly called YAM, which is the uh, installer for all the packages like, I don't know, Aptitude or, or Windows Store or whatever. Uh, it's also written in Python, and in, it installs RPM packages. Um, but users also like to use pip. I love to use pip. Uh, I love to use virtual environments but many users don't know what virtual environments are. They just see, okay, pip install this thing, doesn't work, let's use sudo pip install instead. What could possibly go wrong? Um, and uh, some, some people ask us, why do you even package Python packages that can be installed with pip as RPM packages? Isn't that just waste of effort? But the problem is that uh, even the DNF installation tool our package management tool have dependencies of something that's written in Python and it needs to have dependencies packaged as RPM. PIP is just like a layer for, for users and all the system stuff needs to be RPM packaged. Ah, well, uh, the problem is that um, everything installs to the very same location. The location on disk is user, lib, eventually sometimes 64, Python 3 something, for example, Python 3.11, site packages. DNF, our package manager, installs to this location, and if we don't try to fix this problem, pip, or more like sudo pip, uh, that's pip run under root, uh, will also install to this very same location. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you use sudo pip or if you use sudo setup by install, uh, it will also install to the same location. If you like to build Python from source for yourself, I don't think many people do that, the official normal location is user local lib 64. It won't conflict, but we don't install Python to use a local lib because that's not where RPM package software, which also Python is, goes to. And uh, we could decide to not solve this problem at all and let people do crazy stuff. But if they do, uh, sudo pip, will override the files that are installed by our package manager. And uh, that could lead to a problem. For example, our package manager, um, well, it uses some libraries like six or, or any parse config, something like that. And if you install a new version of this that breaks an API, 
uh, and you can't recover with, with DNF because it no longer works. Uh, one better thing to do, uh, other than sudo pip, is to use pip install user, which will install Python packages to your home directory. Uh, this is like magnitude safer because it won't overwrite any system files. On the other hand, it will shadow the DNF installed files. It means that the files will exist in multiple locations, but if you run Python and you import some library, or when the system management tool is written in Python and it imports the library, it imports the pip installed stuff anyway. And it could be an incompatible version or something completely different and stuff like that. And we tried to solve this problem for a very long time, and it's not solved yet completely. Uh, interestingly, uh, it used to be in the way that DNF was first running on Python 2, like in last century and so, and then it switched to Python 3, and there was a time when you could install both at the same time, and then if you screwed up one of them, you could recover using the other one. But this is no longer the case. We killed Python 2 from Fedora very, very long time ago, like a year ago, uh, longer. And uh, we only have one DNF, and people are trying to rewrite DNF in C++, uh, which would solve our problem a little bit as well, but it hasn't happened yet. So we decided we need to fix this. And the fix is quite trivial uh, if you design it, and it only uh, strikes back when you actually try to do it. Uh, the fix is to have two separate locations. One for the packages that the system tool uses and installs, uh, like the RPM, DNF, and stuff, and the other location, completely separate on file system, uh, pip, where setup.py install and pip installs the packages. And you have some set of rules, like pip cannot ever uninstall, install, upgrade to the system location, and also that anything that we install from RPM packages should not be able to see and import the modules from the pip installed locations, because if it, if it can see them, then you can break your system with pip anyway. There are some exceptions to this rule. Uh, for example, if you have a DNF package, so RPM package software uh, that has pip installable plugins, in that case, you want the users to be able to pip install plugins to your RPM package software, and it gets really messy, but for most of the software, this is not the case. Uh, but if, if, you, if you forbid Python from seeing the stuff that's into, installed into the separate location, you still need Python run by users to see it, because if the user runs sudo pip install very cool thing, then they open up Python and then import the thing, and it's not importable, they think the system is broken. So we need two locations, explain, you install here and not here, you install here and not here, and we also need two ways of invoking Python. One of them sees everything, and the other one is safe and only can see what we allow it to see. There are also some limitations about how we wanted to approach this problem. And we wanted to patch pip first, but uh, that's not possible, because users will use pip to upgrade pip. So if we add patches, like custom modifications to pip in Fedora, they will run pip install upgrade pip, get a newer version of pip without our patch, and the next time they use it, they lose the patch. Uh, I was talking to my colleagues today that maybe we could patch pip in a way that when it upgrades itself, it applies our patch to the new version it's installing to keep the patch, but that seems kind of fragile and we didn't want to go that way. The same problem is with setup tools which is a library that's usually uh, called when you run setup.py install something, because people can pip install upgrade setup tools. The only way we can actually achieve this in Fedora is that we patch Python itself. Users cannot do pip install upgrade Python yet. And I hope they will never be able to do that. Uh, so if we keep the patch localized in Python, and we don't let it leak to pip and setup tools, and the patch will work, and everything will work properly, and if we do the stuff that I outlined previously, it should work. And we actually did that, and this is not a new thing. Uh, the first solution for the problem was presented on PyCon Slovakia in 2017, 
uh, by Michal Ciprian, who used to work on this problem back then. Uh, we called it making Pseudopip safe. It was a joke for Trump because it was very long time ago. Uh, and it was Fedora 27, now we are uh, releasing Fedora 37, uh, so it's basically history. And the Python version was 3.6, in case you like, want to put it in some context. Uh, 3.6 is out of support, uh, that's only this Red Hat company that still supports it somewhere, but uh, no, nobody is really into that. So how we solved this uh, is that we, we changed the distutils library. The distutils library is I wanted to say piece of chunk, but I don't want to insult anybody. Uh, it's very old and there is a lot of stuff in it uh, and it's riddled with old stuff and something is used somewhere, uh, is duplicated with a lot of other things. But back in the day, uh, five years ago, um, we realized that if we change this details, setup tools will change the behavior and pip will also change the behavior, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, it was perfect. So we looked at the distutils command install, and we say, okay, of the default prefix, and prefix is like the first part of the, of the path where we are installing stuff, is set to user slash USR. Uh, we change it to user local. And we only obviously do this, uh, well, it does not affect virtual environments, because in virtual environments, the path to the virtual environment is the prefix, not user. And uh, we only do this when we are not building RPM packages. So the idea is uh, we detect that we are building RPM packages, and if we are, we keep the default value as it is. And if we are not building RPM packages, we change the default prefix. If the user supplies their own custom prefix, even the original one, it takes precedence. So uh, whenever user wants to do something explicitly, it, it gets done. There is no surprises there. And the thing is that it fixed pip, it fixed setup by install when you import setup from setup tools, even if you import from these tutorials directly because we changed this in these tutorials. And uh, the only thing that remained to be done was to make sure that the packages that are installed to user local are visible at all because if we only do these changes, you start installing packages to custom locations but you never actually import it from there, which makes it kind of useless. And we needed a way to make sure that some of the software can see it and some of the software cannot see it. And we end up reusing uh, an existing mechanics. So when, when Python starts, the syspath is constructed. Uh, I don't know how deep I need to go. Who's never heard of syspath here? Carolina is trolling me, that's fine. Uh, everybody heard of syspath. Um, if you start Python with s flag, it says skip the user site directory, and whatever you have installed with pip or similarly into your home is not going to be included in syspath. So we reuse the flag, and when you use the s flag, you don't add the user local either. And when you don't use the s flag, which most people don't, uh, you also get the pip packages installed to your home, pip packages installed to user local, and obviously the default, the, the stuff that's installed in user lab. Um, and we needed to change all our RPM packaged Python software to add the S to the shebang, which is the line that it's on the beginning of the script. Changing everything that we package sounds horrible, like we have 4,000 Python packages, but we have something that processes them when we build them. So we just changed the stuff to add the flag. Uh, this also made our systems a little bit safer because something that was pip installed to home could not have destroyed something that you install from RPM. Again, there are exceptions when you have pip installable plugins and stuff, but I don't want to go that way. The problem with patching distutils command install is that there is no distutils command uninstall. Uh, I've already said what I think about this tutorial, so this is one of the problem. You can install stuff with this tutorials, but you can never uninstall anything with this tutorials. The concept is entirely unknown to it. So when pip removes a package, for example, because you decide to uninstall it, or because you want to upgrade one, it has custom logic to deal with that. So this created a problem. When you run pip install with sudo, it finds the old version in the stuff that's supposed not to be touched by pip and happily uninstalls it for you. 
And then it sees our patch and installs the new version to user local. Uh, with the combination of the S thing, it means that anything that uses the S flag uh, no longer has any version of this library because it's gone. Um, it's just a tiny little problem that makes this completely useless. Um, so what we did is that we patched pip. Um, yeah, I know. It's sad. Um, the thing is that now it only bites you if you sudo pip upgrade pip and then you sudo pip upgrade something else which happens to be also imported by DNF. Uh, and, uh, well, users actually stopped complaining about the problem after we did all this. So uh, we just limited the scope uh, uh, for users who do crazy things twice. Um, we were not happy about this, but it kind of worked. And uh, a couple of years later, somebody said, screw you, Fedora. Uh, we are going to remove these tutorials. These tutorials is a piece of crap. And we were like, yeah, we know, <laughs> but we kind of need that. Uh, so in 2020, um, this tutorials module was deprecated. It was for Python 3.10. If you import from this tutorials, you get deprecation warnings. Uh, we got a Python 3.12 alpha one already released. It still contains this tutorials, uh, but the main branch of Python uh, already deleted it. So next time we have uh, Python 3.12 alpha two, uh, there will be no more this tutorials. Um, and we said, we, we need this tutorials because we are patching it and we can't really patch Python uh, like we do, but uh, anyway. Uh, and we can't patch setup tools and stuff. We need to patch the standard library. Uh, and uh, setup tools folks say, we need this tutorials. Setup tools really just wrap around this tutorials. Uh, so what they did is they take this tutorials from standard library and they bundle or vendor it or just put it in setup tools directly. And not only that, they started to do custom changes in it. And we were like, we are seriously screwed because everything we did is canceled. So we actually sat down with setup tools maintainers, with the person who deprecated these tutorials, with pip maintainers, and with Debian folks and Arch Linux folks, and we sat down, had a meeting, because it was 2020 and everybody had meetings all days, uh, and uh, we decided the only way out of this problem is that we stop patching these tutorials and we start to patch sysconfig. Now, sysconfig is much, much smaller pile of crap, and nobody wants to remove that yet. Uh, it's, um, it's just one file, it doesn't do anything, but it has a lot of information about Python. And uh, in theory, tools like pip should be able to read from sysconfig where they are supposed to install stuff. So the idea that we proposed to each other and agreed and like patted ourselves on our back, like this is so, so, so awesome, is that we make these tutorials use sysconfig, that we make pip use sysconfig, and we make setup tools use the disk tools that uses sysconfig, so basically everybody uses sysconfig, and we move our patch from disk tools to sysconfig, and we will live happily ever after. So first thing we realized is that sysconfig and disk tools have a lot of duplication, but written in a different century, by different people, following different styles, and disk tools have something called installation schemes. It's just a big, dictionary that has a lot of schemes, and each scheme has, uh, has a list of templates of paths where something is installed. One of the schemes is Unix prefix. Uh, Fedora is Linux. Linux is technically, in this context, considered Unix. Uh, so Unix prefix is a scheme that, that's the one that we are dealing with. And there are two directories. Uh, one of them is called PureLab. Uh, it's for the pure libraries written in pure Python. And the other one is called PlatLab. It's the platform-specific ones, extension modules written in Fortran, uh, C, Rust, whatever. Uh, and it has the, this path there on the right uses, um, um, it looks like shell variables or something like that, or PHP variables, or I don't know. Uh, door signs. And this basically translates to user lib python free 11 uh, site packages. 
And this is the stuff that Digital uses. Uh, on the other hand, sysconfig has this giant, giant dictionary called installation schemes. It has a lot of keys that are called weirdly like POSIX prefix. Fedora is technically POSIX in this context. Uh, somebody decided to call it completely different. It makes the same ifs to go inside that branch. And it has a lot of keys inside. Uh, one of them is called purelib. The other one is called platlib. And it basically contains the very same stuff, except now we no longer use dollars, but we use curly brackets, because this was written in another century. Uh, so what Lumir did, Lumir is the, the guy in the pilot shirt over there, thank you Lumir. He, in Python 3.10, he removed the first dictionary and added some wrapper that translates the one to, to the other. So if you make change in one place, it also affects the other place, which was, uh, according to our plan, uh, supposed to save us. Uh, and at the same time, uh, Philip from, from Arc Linux created a, a bug on CPython called Allow Python Distributors, that's us, to add custom site installation schemes. So the idea is that there is this POSIX prefix and then you have this Fedora prefix or Debian prefix or RPM prefix or system prefix, local prefix, doesn't matter. We create more because the more the merrier and then we add logic to decide when we install there and when we install somewhere else. It was a very good idea, but it didn't work. Um, so in Python 3.10, uh, he added uh, sysconfig get preferred scheme because previously the, the way the scheme was selected was like if your operating system is not Windows, then you are POSIX and you need POSIX prefix. Uh, and now there is, a, there is a function in this module and the distributors like us have the ability to change the logic according to their needs to select the actual prefix. So we created a custom Fedora scheme, which added, added the, I don't know if I can find my mouse, I can't find it. So there is the base, which is basically the prefix, but called differently, and then there is the local part, which is the stuff that we are, we wanted to add the local part. And uh, then we patch get preferred scheme to actually select which of these schemes is gonna be used, and that's gonna decide where is this gonna land. Uh, the first problem we found out is that these tutels uh, uses the schemes from sysconfig, because that's what Lumi did, but completely ignores some, some logic. It only uses the same dictionary. So if we change get preferred scheme, uh, these tutels won't change the behavior, and uh, pip still uses these tutels, and anything we do in sysconfig is just theoretical because nobody uses it. Uh, so we sat down, cried a little, and decided that instead of adding more schemes, we will change the behavior of the default scheme on the fly. I'll show you, because it's getting really complicated and we are even now like starting. So we decided to create two prefixes first. The POSIX prefix, which Pip would use, is the original, but we are changing it to add the local bit. This is our hack that we use local in it. You can say, see that the pure lib has base slash local and the plat lib has plat base slash local. By the way, base and plat base is slash user both are the same, but it's just prepared for this crazy idea that you would have different. And we also add the RPM prefix, which is used by our RPM packages and it doesn't have the local bit in it. And then we want to get preferred prefix and it would say, is this RPM, is it not? Select this prefix, blah, blah. That didn't work. So what we did, we only kept POSIX prefix with the default as it was, no changes there. And then we had a condition and said, if we are building an RPM package or if this is a virtual environment, the reverse, if we are not building RPM package and this is not a virtual environment, you replace the two values that we care about with our custom values with the locals. And it actually worked. It's like one of the most horrible pieces of code I've ever written, and I am not very proud of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, these tutorials then uh, 
when, when we copied this dictionary over to Distutils, it copied the correct one because it first evaluated the condition and then it was copied instead of the other way around. Uh, it actually created a problem with virtual ENVs um, because nothing in this story goes without any problem. Uh, we've seen that when you create virtual environments on, on Fedora or maybe also in, on Mac, it creates the, the, the bin directory in it. It contains the activate script and Python and stuff like that. And it creates the lib directory in it and Python version side packages, stuff like that. Turns out, virtual env was reading the POSIX prefix and passing custom values to base and plot base in order to find out where to put this. And we kind of patched it and added the local bit in it. So when you used virtual env, it created venv local bin activate. And nobody expects the local inquisition in there. So uh, this broke, uh, but the, the standard library venv module, which is supposed to do the very same stuff as virtual env, uh, kept working. So I dig in and realized that the paths in the standard library venv are hard coded and the paths in virtual env are clever. Um, so what we did eventually after talking to Bernard, uh, who is the maintainer of virtual env, and after talking to people who maintain the venv module in the standard library, and unfortunately I forgot who they are, uh, we decided that we will create another installation scheme to bootstrap virtual environments. Uh, when I say bootstrap, it's because when you are actually inside a virtual environment, everything works correctly. The only problem is if you are not in a virtual environment and you look at the installation scheme to create a virtual environment, you need to make something a little bit different. We call this virtual environment venv. There are actually two, actually three. One of them is POSIX venv, and the other one is NT venv because we, we don't use Linux and Windows when we talk about Linux as Windows. We use uh, different names, I don't know why. And then there is Venv, which is dynamically selected uh, depending on the platform. And this allowed us to only patch POSIX prefix, but keep the Venv unpatched. And it started to work in virtual Venv. And in the process, we also changed the Venv module to no longer hard code the paths, but use the installation schemes, which means that Whenever we break something, it affects everything uh, the same way, which is very nice. Like if, if you're breaking stuff, it's very good that you're breaking stuff consistently. Uh, it really helps with debugging and stuff. Uh, this Venv scheme has been added to Fedora and Python 3.10 by our custom patch, but later was added to Python 3.11, uh, and the Dead Snakes repo for Ubuntu uses it, and other people are using it in different projects. And it actually made this mess a little bit easier inside. Probably not easier to understand, though. Yeah, but easier to, to work with. Uh, and we, we deployed this. This was in Fedora 36, this, this hack. And we realized we made a terrible, terrible mistake. Um, again. I mean, why don't they just fire me, right? Um, so when you pip install with dash dash prefix, what happens behind the curtain is that the, the base here, the base value in here, and it should say, this should say plot base on the second line. It's a copy based error, but that's not important. Here, here we have base and plot base. That's got, it gets substituted with slash user, and we put the local after that. So if the actual user says, I want the user prefix, we say, yes, sure, base is user. Um, but the scheme says slash local, so we will put it there for you, even though you never wanted it and never expected it. Even worse, if the user actually wants to put it in the user local, we would say, okay, basis user local, slash local, and uh, it goes that way. So uh, the users complained a lot. <laughs> we had to revert everything, uh, and I really wanted to quit at that point. Uh, yeah, 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 I never wanted to quit. Yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, this is awesome. So we decided to we need to do it completely different. Uh, and one of the idea I got 
was to change the, the, the variable, the base in it, to a completely new variable that I invented. I called it local base in my work in progress patch and create a custom logic that actually says the local base is user or user local depending on the circumstances. Uh, this was a very, very bad idea and I realized it like five seconds later because no code around it is expecting a new variable. There are lists of those variables hard-coded in every project and suddenly you try to make new ones it would probably require a new PEP and agreement on all the levels. So I abandoned this quickly and instead decided to change the default meaning of base and plot base. What does it mean? It means that here in, the, in this dictionary, instead of saying that the base is sysprefix, the default one, uh, the default would be depending on the environment, either sysprefix or something else, and I'll show you. This is not the interesting bit. This is the interesting bit. So in sysconfig, there is, it's, it has a lot of layers of code. This is part of our patch, but on the top, uh, we removed the unconditional call to extend dictionary, which extends the installation scheme's defaults, uh, and instead there is this giant if uh, that says, if this is exactly the POSIX prefix and not another one, because if we didn't check for POSIX prefix, we might have been destroying the venv prefix. Uh, and the actual prefix is user, and we are not building RPM packages, then we call config vars local, which is our custom function. And if it's not true, we roll back to the original function. And what our custom function does, uh, it hard codes the, 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 the defaults, the user local and uh, user local. It's so not portable to anything else in Fedora, but on the other way, if you look at the conditional, it says if the prefix is user, change the default to user local. And this is actually the only thing that was needed to make this work. The problem is, it didn't work in disutils, because disutils is reading the dictionary and not the logic around it. So we still needed to do some stuff in disutils, and we needed to change disutils from sysconfig. And I am not very proud of this, uh, but we set a prefix addition based on some conditional to local, and then in disutils, we read the prefix addition and use, do something about it. And this code is actually in setup tools and it has a comment that says, allow Fedora to do crazy stuff or something like that. Um, it works, uh, surprisingly, uh, and it only requires this one change in SidePy, which has always been there for the last five years and that's when we are not building RPM packages and when there is no S flag, we add user local to the prefixes list, which then puts user local lib Python free something site packages to SysPath. This is probably too much for you, I know. Bear with me. Pip is still broken. <laughs> um, that's because uh, it still cannot update. I'm, I'll roll back to the slide. The problem hasn't disappeared. Uh, I've just said a lot of stuff. In, uh, this still happens. So we still patch Pip. And uh, it's frustrating because you say, like, uh, you decide that this needs to be solved, like, in a nice way, but at the end, you just pile patches on top of patches. Uh, so what somebody else did, and it's cool because not, we are not the only ones who are bothered with this complicated stuff, is that they proposed a Python enhancement proposal 668, unfortunately 666, which would be much more suitable number, uh, was already taken. Uh, it says, uh, it's called marking Python ba base environments as externally managed, uh, which would allow us to say everything in this directory is extremely managed, and you pip, uh, you don't touch it, because it's extremely, uh, extremely bad to touch it, externally, not extremely, uh, externally managed. Uh, how this works in practice is that uh, on a certain location you put a marker file and in the marker file you explain why this is a bad idea. 
to install there. And then pip, when it attempts to install there or uninstall from there, reads the marker file, and instead of doing the action, it presents the error message to the user saying this is not possible. The pep actually says that pip is allowed to add a custom switch, something like dash dash, I know what I am doing, please let me install here anyway. Uh, it has been not yet implemented, and uh, I started to look into it and say, okay, let's do this, and I read the pep, I tried to actually participate in the pep for a couple of years, but then it got stalled, then I looked away for a while, and suddenly it was approved. So I came after it was approved, and I put the marker in userlib python 3x, because I don't want pip to install in userlib, I only want pip to install to user local, and uh, obviously, I couldn't test it because pip does not support this yet. But uh, I realized there is a big problem again. And that is the, the pep says that the marker should live in the stdlib part of the location, uh, which is another part of the installation scheme that I have not yet talked about. And it doesn't use base, it doesn't use plot base, but it uses installed base which is the location where Python is installed. So obviously we don't put local there because our Python is not installed in user local, it's just not. So uh, basically if we put the marker in user lib, it will prevent installation to both user lib and user local lib, which is exactly not what we wanted. So we need to put the marker there, but also not put it there at the same time, which uh, might be possible with quantum computing and um, I don't know if this problem will be solved uh, before we solve the quantum computing problem or not. Um, one, of the, one of the easiest way to solve this is to also change installed base to also add the local and pretend it's there, even though it's not there, and then put the marker only in one of them. Uh, I have a, I have a like, pr moral problem uh, with lying in, in the installation schemes because we tried to do that once and it was a UX nightmare. So uh, I've talked to the PEP authors and the people who approved it and said in the current form, we are not able to use this the way we want to use this. Well, what's the next steps? And they said, it's obvious, uh, Future needs another PEP. And it needs to recognize that there are actually two separate installation locations one for pip and second for Linux distributors. And uh, we can bike shit about it for the next 10 years and hopefully we will move somewhere. The good thing is that this utils is dying and pip now uses sysconfig and we can probably keep this contained at least a little bit. Uh, but uh, so far it only works because it's like a very big coincidence. And if you do several actions in a row, uh, you can still break your Fedora if you use sudopip. Uh, one solution to this problem is to tell people not to use sudopip. Uh, they don't listen. <laughs> but I'm urging you just stop using sudopip and you will probably be fine. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, I hope it made at least a little bit of sense because it's really complex. Uh, and if you have questions, I probably will hear them for you or they are here. Thank you. What a journey, thank you. Uh, yeah, we have a question. Uh, did you, obviously someone came up with a solution while we were talking, so did you think about wrapper around pip command which shadows original pip? I'll answer the meta stuff about this first and then the actual question. Uh, Every time I explain this to somebody, I usually when I'm drunk on the social event and I'm like frustrated, uh, they come up with solutions that are perfect. And I came up with 50 solutions that were perfect until I tried them. So I'm pretty sure this was one of them. The problem with the wrappers is that there are multiple ways to execute pip. Uh, you can run pip and it runs user bin pip, which is cool. We could put a wrapper in there, but you could also run pip from an activated virtual environment. You can run pip, uh, Python and pip, and there is a lot of way to do this. Uh, and also, people also run sudo setup by install. So even if we make pip work, uh, we still have a different problem. 
So usually there is a solution that makes part of this better, but then you realize you need to keep parts of the original solution in place anyway, and suddenly the entire patch like grows, and not only in the number of lines of code, but also in number of projects that we need to patch. So this is probably not a very bad idea, but I don't think it's, it's, it's much better than what we have now. But I'll explore it next time I'm, I'm working on this, definitely. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. Thank you again.